1200. Year two, 1200 pounds, interest rate 20%, 240. Year three, 140, interest is 288. You'll see that the actual interest you're paying is rising, it's rising exponentially. After 20 years, <coughs> bit of audience participation, after 20 years, you borrow a thousand pounds, a 20% interest rate, how much would you owe? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. A lot. 12,000? <laughs> Probably 12,000. You need to have a cop with my head. You need a lot of money. <laughs> Oh, wow. for, for a thousand, that's for borrowing a thousand pounds. So the effect of compound interest is uh, is pretty uh, is pretty is pretty nasty. So something to some something to be concerned about. And then what I've done is I've just got a couple of sort of silly examples. But so way, if you were to borrow ten thousand pounds, you might borrow it at twelve percent interest or over five over five years. Borrow at 12% over five years, you'll pay interest of 3,300. You might have a mortgage and add 10,000 pounds to your mortgage and pay it off over 25 years. Under those circumstances, interest rate is 6%, so half the rate, the interest you're paying is 9,200. So it's not just about the interest rate, it's also about the term. So always, when you're going into borrowing, think about the term you're borrowing, not just, um, not just exactly how much, uh, not, not, don't be over, over, don't overcompensate or think too much about the interest rate. This happens a lot in my, in my daily life when, when clients come to me and look at two little different bank loans and say, which one should I go for? And they always think, oh, I'll go for one with a lower interest rate. And it's not always the best one to go for. It very much depends on their circumstances. Um, it needs to be considered. Now, necessary or unnecessary debt. We're looking at, we're looking at different sorts of, uh, Different, sort, different, different, different sorts of debts. Um, and really to compare it between good debt or bad debt or necessary debt or, or unnecessary debt. As I said, the first thing is the student loan. And student loan is actually good value for money, for tutoring fees. It's the cheapest way of doing it. It's actually linked to the rate of interest. And what you actually end up paying, as, long as, as soon as you're earning more than 21,000 pounds, you pay 9% of your, of, of effectively, it's like a graduate tax. So you're earning more than 21,000 pounds, you pay 9% on the excess until the loan's cleared. Um, so the idea is you're only paying it when you're, when, you, when you're earning and that's not such a terrible thing because you can you, in the theories you'll be able to afford to, afford to pay it. Um, it sometimes comes it comes up when you add that nine percent into fairly strange rates of tax and, and I can with another example I did a presentation um, to, to a group of accountants and uh, we actually managed to show that we actually the top rate of tax was about 85 percent by the time you take account the nine percent tax rate nine percent of this of graduate tax. Interest-free overdrafts, again, they've got to be pre-arranged. As I said, HSBC will lend you £3,000 uh, interest-free. Santana will lend you £1,500 tax-free. And so that's the free rail card. But don't forget, you've got to give it back. It's not, it's not a gift, it's a loan. And subject to terms and conditions, if it's not paid back within a reasonable period of the university of the co uh, college course finishing, they, st they can start adding interest to it. So it's not, you need to look at the terms and conditions. So we've got two, we're sort of going, going down in sort of into areas now. Third type, commercial debts, loans, and this, that, and the other. Fourth, credit cards. Now credit cards can be absolutely fine. A lot of them offer a balance free transfers, no interest on certain things for a period of time. That's quite good, but know what you're getting into. Uh, because as soon as you're past that period, it can go up to about 22% interest rate, or it turns a bit harder. Store cards, you know, another, don't get a store card. However tempting it is to get 20% off your pair of shoes, it's not worth it because the interest rate is between 25 and 30% on a store card. However appealing, and the only reason they're offering it to you at the till is not so they can give you 10% or 20% off, off those shoes. It's because the person selling it gets commission. That's where companies are not your friends. They're just trying to make money out of you. Um, and payday loans, what is that about? Wongas, all that, just, 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 Avoid that. Um, okay, I tell you what. I, I got. I got. I've got. I'll give. I've got four examples. Why is and it I want. Like you know, like longer. Longer. Oh, okay. <laughs> a payday pay loan is a facility to go. You, you you dial up certain companies. Wonga is one of them. You tell them how much you want to borrow, how many days you want to borrow, and they tell you how much to pay back. The interest rate is just under two thousand pounds per per year. So. 
Two, yeah, two thousand. Sorry, two thousand percent. I'm really pleased Lucy's here to correct me. So there's never one. So basically, they loaned you to your next payday, which is why it's called when you pay them back on your next payday. But but don't don't but just disaster, however tempting pay. those adverts look. Then you're in big trouble. Just just don't just don't do it. Okay, I'll tell you what. I've got I've got a. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you four scenarios. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you if you, say, if you think it's good debt or bad debt. <coughs> okay? You want to go on holiday because you haven't been away for three months. You need to pay for it <laughs> on credit card. Is that good yeah, debt okay. or bad debt? Who thinks that's good debt? You need to pay on credit card. You like credit cards. Well, or who thinks it's bad debt? <laughs> uh, uh, there's a, a, a small minority of those who answered um, thought it was bad debt, and I think it's bad debt as well because the rate of interest is really high on a on a. Um, on a card. Okay, number number two. You've recently got married, and it's time to get your own house. You need to borrow, and you need to get a mortgage to do so. Good debt or bad debt? Good yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, doesn't mean you shouldn't look around, doesn't mean you shouldn't look, get the best deals, but finding the right deal is really, really good and it's the only way to do it. Third, you've got a new job, moved house, and now live eight miles from work. And, you're, and you have to drop someone off ten miles away. There's no public transport, so you borrow for a car. Bad good debt or bad debt? Good debt. Bad debt. Bad debt. Bad debt. Well, is there public transport? There isn't public transport. Bad debt. Bad debt. My view is it's good debt because you need you need that car because without it. That was a tricky one. No, they're getting harder. Okay. The last one's quite easy then. You have a store car with a limit of five hundred pounds, and you're off to a big party. You see clothes to buy that cost you two hundred and fifty pounds. <laughs> Do you go for it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Degree of working through. The thing about debt is this sort of, sort of whole sort of spiral of debt, and it just it just points this out with an example. You know, if you let's just say you like going to a club every week, and suddenly you can't afford it, what do you do? You don't go. You stop. Because you can't afford it. Now consider that to a debt. You've entered into a loan where you've got to pay back. You can't say, I don't fancy paying it back. You've got a legal obligation to. So it's a it's not like it's not like normal expenditure. It's an, borrowing is an unusual expenditure and it's up and you've got to be very, very careful. You're entering an obligation to pay, so you just need to be uh, need, 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 need to need, need to need to be very, very careful about it. Finally, oh, phew, we're there. <laughs> loyalty, loyalty is for losers, and how to be a savage, sh uh, a, sorry, a savvy shopper. <laughs> Why is it important? It's important because the new rules just don't apply. There's no, there's no normal rules. Um, if you stick with the same people, it probably means you get less, and there is no such thing as a fixed price. So, what's 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 terrible? What's wrong with what's wrong with being with being loyal? Well, just on average, is it, is from money soup, money soup. Uh, sorry, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Martin's money saving expert. They did, they did a test on people that use the same companies and people who change companies. And overall, if you they showed on average spending, average family spending, you could you're actually wasting £5,000 a year by not looking around. By not, that is, every single week, getting your wallet, opening the window, and throwing out £100. So it's really important to, to buy, things, buy, things, buy things right. If you, um, loyalty, you know, if you, we, we had, I'll give it a sort of silly example, but, but, but uh, wife Lucy, we had, we had, um, we, we insured her car for a number of years with Direct Line. 
and very loyal to Direct Line, which is which, which is uh, interesting. And we had the renewal premium in, and it was a bit more than I thought it was going to be. So I phoned up and got a. I phoned up Direct Line. So I phoned up the same company, and I gave them details of the next door neighbour driving the same car as us. And the premium was about 45% less. Mm -hmm. That is just an example of companies, you know, of, of, of you know, there's no benefit for things like insurance are being law. Same thing with telephone contracts. When you come to the end of your contract, what people do is they just roll on and continue. No, look round, find out the best deal. Makes a, it makes a, it makes a massive difference. Same thing with Sky TV or something like that. Those sort of channels. They, if you look and really challenge it, you can make a make 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 a make make make, make a big make a big difference. So that's talks talks about car insurance. And if you're going to use a comparison website, just don't use one. Use two. There's no there's no point in doing one because they they, they don't always use the same indices. So it's worth going to two two insurance insurance sites but what you will find is you see something on the internet say you're about to book a, a hotel or something on the internet you'll have a price so often if you pick up the phone you'll get a better deal than the best internet price because you've spoken not always but but so many times you can because they don't always publish their best price they publish a price that they want the world to see so it's worth picking up the phone it's worth haggling it's worth making a you know Showing what's in it for them. If you stick your neck out, um, it will make it make it make it makes a big difference. So uh, yes, that's the that's all I wanted to talk about. I hope that was uh, hope that was clear. Uh, any questions? <laughs> um, if you have so if you have an overdraft of yep. three thousand pounds and you have to pay no interest on it, could you not just go overdraft by three thousand pounds, put it in an account where you're earning a lot of interest? back for yourself? Yes, you could do. And then make money on it for three years? Yes, you could do. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> what we're saying is, if you've got, you can borrow £3,000. We looked, one of the banks, which one was it? It was HSBC HSBC and Halifax will both lend you, th will both lend you £3,000 interest free. So what is to stop you? Taking the £3,000, putting it into the highest rate of interest you can get, which is probably not very much at the moment, maybe 3%, something like that, especially if you put it in a, in a cash ISA, maybe you get a bit more, 4%. Taking the interest at the end of three years, giving them the money back. There is nothing to stop you doing it at all. If you do it at the same bank, it's probably even funny. You might even feel, <laughs> bring a, a nice little smile to your face. Um, no, there's, not, there's, 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 nothing, there's nothing wrong with that at all. And it sounds a, it sounds, it sounds a sensible idea. Unless you need the money. If you need it, then it might cost yeah. you more to get it elsewhere. Good shout. Mm -hmm. Who's it? When you talk about bank statements, you mentioned direct debits. Can you explain what they are and whether they're a good thing or not? I love them. A direct debit is, a, is allowing somebody to take money directly out of your bank account. So you can, by signing the appropriate paperwork, a third party can take money out of your bank account. They must follow banking rules, which means they must give you, I think it's seven days notice, it might be more than that, notice they're going to take out. If you dispute it, they must freeze it straight away. So they must follow certain rules. Um, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Many companies, that's the only way they'll do business with you if you're into a direct debit. So it's not a good thing or bad thing, it's, that's just how they do business. So you may not have any choice about it. But, uh, but there's not, in, it, in itself, there's nothing wrong with it. What, what the problem is, if you don't check it, if you just don't open your post, look at it, and then it comes out, there are still things you can do about it, but it's not, it's not, the, it's, the, it's the checking that's important. The theory of how they take money is absolutely fine. Why would they be taking money from your account? Let's just say you're, like, um, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, do you remember oh, shit, oh, your mobile okay. phone bill, that sort of thing. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, people, supplies to you. Okay. Okay, I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm about done. Not that I can add much to Jeff said, but but just a, just a couple of small points. Um, when you get what looks like a legal document with words on it in tight small print, probably you should read it 
and try and understand it because it will tell you the terms of what you are doing. Right from, I've already seen in Rachel's case, um, the contract from her Hall of Residence. It tells her how she must behave, what she can do and what she can't do and what the rules are. So, and you'll all have something like that. So I would suggest when you get documents like that, although they look boring, they're important and read and understand them. Um, secondly, something else to add to what Jeff has, uh, Jeff has said. Whenever you hear the words from an automated voice machine that we value your custom, it means they don't value your custom. <laughs> people with automate people who use automated voice machines to say they value your custom clearly don't. You know, and that is likely to be mobile phone companies who always use them, television uh, television providers. Any company who does that probably is a pro you know, is a prime example of what Jeff's talking about. Um, uh, I'm not in the uh, I'm not in the finance field, but I do have a few words. Uh, I just want to start off by saying it's really uh, uh, lovely to see um, si to see you all and uh, to see so many faces that I've known since you were like little kids in primary school. And it's lovely to see you all going off to going off to university and you know see see you all sort of big. You know, I mean, so I remember you coming in and playing in the garden. You know, so <laughs> you're all grown up and big. It's, it's, Fantastic, fantastic! It's really, it's really, really lovely. I wish you all, you know, wish you all a great time, a wonderful, uh, wonderful time at at, um, at university. Um, I, I don't do finance. I do, I do stuff about jobs. And you know, maybe we'll come back here in a few years' time because you will be looking for jobs and stuff. And I have something useful to tell you. But I did just want to want, want to tell you this. Um, I talked to um, the human resources directors of lots of very large companies. Um, and they are very aware of what goes on in social media and very interested in what goes on in social media. Already, when they're recruiting people, young people, graduates, for their first jobs, they're looking at what goes on on Twitter, they're looking at what's going on on Facebook, 